I needed some sulfuric acid. I could have ordered some and had it delivered. But right here at Ace Hardware, I picked up some amazing liquid fire drain line opener. I am 3 no 3. I hope you enjoy this. Warning, sulfuric acid eats organic material. You are organic material. Fumes can damage your eyes and airways. I've used this product before and some people claim that it's 95% sulfuric acid. I wanted to treat this product to make it more suited for my intended use. So I have the super scientific hot plate set up. That's kale wool around the bottom of the thousand milliliter beaker there. And I've got some tongs to help hold it into place. I have glass marbles in the bottom of the beaker to act as like boiling chips. So we're going to pour some of the drain opener right into the beaker to see if we can clean it up using a little bit of heat. Sulfuric acid is usually clear, but this product has a reddish brown tint to it. And I originally thought that it was just a dye that was added so that you could see when it went down the drain. When I was considering buying some technical grade or reagent grade sulfuric acid, I wanted to know what the difference was between that and this. It took some digging, but I was able to find the material safety data sheet. Rhodine 31A. Never heard of that before. Well, it turns out that it's just diethyl diurea. Why didn't you just say so? This compound is actually an organic corrosion inhibitor so that if you have metal fixtures or metal piping, it will slow the sulfuric acid from corroding them. The boiling point of this rhodine 31A is supposed to be 100 degrees Celsius, the same as water. And if you were watching my thermometer, you can see that we've already hit that. The chemical formula for generic diethyl diarrhea is C5H12N2S. But specifically, rhodine 31A may vary from that a little bit. So these fumes are probably mostly carbon monoxide because of the carbon in there. It could also be sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and several other things. But it was really annoying and the wind kept changing directions. So I went and got a box fan so that I could make it go in a specific direction away from me. And right about here, I killed the heat and let it start to cool off. Since it went from the red brown color to a almost completely black color, there is a good chance that if I let it cool off and I let it settle for a really long time, that all of the Rodine 31A may have sunk to the bottom and precipitated out. But I didn't want to take that chance and have to do this all over again. So I gave it a stir to see if there was anything moving around in there, but I really didn't see anything. So my next step was to get some hydrogen peroxide. And this is just regular 3% hydrogen peroxide that I'm adding slowly to this still warm sulfuric acid solution. And this is uncut, but sped up to four times actual speed. It's really amazing that just 3% hydrogen peroxide made it get that clear that quick. So right about here, this is what you call a piranha solution. 
H4SO6. It won't stay that way for long because the oxygen will quickly be liberated. You can actually see the big bubbles in there now while the hydrogen peroxide is breaking down into water. One of the downsides of using hydrogen peroxide, especially 3%, is that when it does change to water, it will leave our solution more diluted. So we're going to have to add some heat and try to remove the water from it so we get it back to at least the concentration that it originally was. Now I realize that distillation might have been a better process, but that does require a couple of things, and that is a hot plate that can reach about 300 degrees Celsius and hold it for a while, and it also requires a distillation apparatus that I just don't have at the moment. So with what I had to work with, I feel like this was really the best alternative to make this sulfuric acid usable for what I want to use it for. When I used this product in the past, I used it to make sure I got all of the lead out of an aqueous gold solution. It would just turn the lead into lead sulfide and it would precipitate out and I didn't need to do anything to it. I could use it as is. But if I want to use this for electrochemistry, I believe that the additive may impede its performance. Here you can see we're just getting to right around 200 degrees Celsius and not much higher. I may have to see if I can alter the super scientific hot plate to reach just a little bit of a higher temperature. Another thing that I used this brand of drain cleaner for was to make nitric acid. And again, I could use it as it was, and it made pretty decent nitric acid. Anyway, here you can see it's actually boiling, regardless of what my thermometer says. Here you can see that the fumes started to get really pronounced again, like they were before. And I'm sure at this point, most of the water, not all, but most of the water is gone. And looking at this, I'm really glad that I decided to use the cat's eye marbles because it just looks cool. When sulfuric acid is distilled to 98% purity, it becomes azeotropic with the other 2% of water. So the water and the sulfuric acid have the same boiling point. Here you can see it started producing really intense fumes again. So at this point, I'm going to turn off the heat and consider this my end product. Even if you had really good distillation equipment, you're still not going to be able to distill it to over 98%. It would take extra measures and I don't know why you would need 99 or 100% sulfuric acid anyway. Even if this did turn out to be 98% pure, I would still probably dilute it for my purposes. The main purpose of me doing all this was to get rid of the inhibitor so that it would work with electrochemistry. To me, this looks pretty clear. Maybe a little bit yellow, but it's pretty clear. Let's compare it to the original liquid fire to see the difference. Wow, that's kind of crazy. Anyway, I can tell this isn't 98% pure because looking at it, it's not a homogeneous mixture. It's like there's two different densities inside of the glass. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that to show up on film very well, but I could get the paper test to show up on film. Well, that's not exactly a titration or a reaction that's slow enough to where we can compare the two. They both seem pretty strong. It looks like 
in what we did, the clear solution doesn't have any more inhibitor and it doesn't appear that it lost any strength and it may have gained some concentration. So we'll put the liquid fire back in its original container and then we'll use this cleaning vinegar jug here because it's HDPE plastic and it's already been used for an acid. So we'll store it in there and just change the label a little bit. The end.